Hi guys, my name is Bill, and in this video I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot the compressor on this Whirlpool side-by-side -side refrigerator. Okay guys, if you got your refrigerator turned on to the on position in the freezer and the refrigerator, the evaporator fan should be running, and the evaporator coils should be frosting up like the one in this picture here. So here's a good look at the compressor. This is what makes that happen. This is what makes the coils frost up. And you can see the condenser fan over there blows air over top of it to keep it cool. And right here you can see that uh, you have two red wires and two white wires going into the condenser fan. And two of those wires run over to the compressor. So they're wired in parallel. So when the condenser fan's running, the compressor should be running. Now we're just troubleshooting the compressor in this video. So if you see the fan running, the compressor should be running. So I'm going to show you how to test that. Let's start by unplugging the refrigerator from the wall. And now we're going to remove the little cover that covers up the PTC and the overload on the side of the compressor. Now there's not a whole lot of room to get in there. As you can see, I'm fighting with it. Now the first thing I'm going to pop off is the PTC relay. And this little white thing down here is the overload. When it gets too hot, it clicks off. And here's a good look at it. And here's a good look at the PTC relay. And that's basically what makes the compressor run. These two things basically sit together like this. And their pins form a little triangle. And you got the common on the bottom there on the overload. And you got your start and your run winding pins up at top there. So to test the overload first, we're going to put our meter on ohms and stick one of our leads on where the wire connects and then we're going to check the pin. Should get a point 0.1 reading. Voltage should be able to pass straight through that. Now if you get an OL reading like this, while you're checking it, then it's, of course it's bad and the compressor is not going to start. But this one's good and we're getting the point 0.1 reading. Now to test the PTC relay, you have a little terminal where the wire connects right there. So now as I figure out how to put the meter lead on there, now the pin that's the pinhole that's straight across from that wire, you should get a 0.1 reading. Voltage is going to pass straight through that. That's your run windings. Now you're going to get resistance on the other pin you should get. Now this one here is going to give about 5, looks like 5.2, something like that. And there's a little coil in there that's creating the resistance on the start windings. So as long as you get the point one on the on the hole straight across from the wire and then a resistance reading of around five or so on the one beside it, then the PTC relay is good and there's no reason why the compressor shouldn't start up if both those parts are, are good. So the last thing we're going to do is go ahead and check the pins on the compressor before we you would replace those. If one of those was bad, check the compressor. So as you can see here, the I know it's hard to see. But my black lead's connected to the bottom pin. Now I'm going to the run windings. And I'm getting 3.2. And I'm going to the start windings here. And we're going to get 3.7. So that's telling me that the start and the run windings on the compressor are good. Now I got my meter lead connected to the top left. And I'm going to measure to the top right. And I'm basically going to read the resistance across both sets of coils. That's why you get the addition. So I'm getting right around 6.4 here. That's almost what they add up together. Here's a little bit better look at the pins. There's the common terminal at the bottom. And this top left one here is the, the run windings. So when you go from the common to the top right, those are the start windings. And then when you measure across the, the two top ones, you're basically reading through the through both coils of the motor. And I hope that's a little bit more clear for you to look at there. Now let's go ahead and put these back on that we know the compressor windings aren't opened up. And we're going to do a little amp draw on the compressor. And these are kind of tricky to get back in. Not a whole lot of room to get your hand in there, as you can see. Or a lot of light. You can't really see it. It's kind of dark in there. But we got them on. So 
So now we can plug our refrigerator back into the wall. And what I've done is connected my amp meter to one of the wires going through the compressor and I'm getting about two amps and it's been running for a couple minutes now. So, and this is a good compressor because I know this machine works perfectly fine. And it don't matter which wire you connect the amp, the clamps to, you're going to get the same on, on both. And it's still hanging right about two amps and this is definitely a good compressor. So this is how you check it to make sure that it's running. So most of the time you're going to find that you might have some burned up starting components on the side of the compressor. Okay guys, that's how you check the compressor on this Whirlpool side-by-side -side refrigerator. So if you have anything to add or any comments or anything like that, please leave them in the comment section. If you liked the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure you do that now. And thanks for watching.